first graders, the book that I'm going to read aloud to you today is called How is a Crayon Made? And it is written by Oz Charles. And there is no illustrator because I think it has real photographs, um, which is part of reading a non-fiction text is that it's real information and it contains real pictures. So everything that is in this book is real and true. So how is a crayon made? You already know, if not, you're going to learn. It's hard to imagine a world without crayons. If all the regular sized crayons made in the United States last year were laid end to end around the equator, they would circle the globe four and a half times. Most people have crayons, but how are they made? The first step in making a crayon is the creation of color, which takes place at the color mill. Water and various chemicals are mixed in big wooden tanks to create the pigments that give crayons their colors. Each pigment is made in a separate tank. The tanks are made of wood rather than metal because metal would interfere with the chemical reaction that creates the colors. So that is a lot of information, but basically there's tons of crayons made every year. They have to be made in wood, not metal, because they have chemicals in them. And they use colors and make the pigments first. Pigment is a color word. Each color solution then passes through a filter press that squeezes out extra water, leaving moist takes of color. So this is where all the water gets squeezed out so that it gets um, just to be the color mix. The cakes of color are scraped off the press broken up by hand and put into stacked plastic trays. So they squeeze all the water out, they make color cakes, cakes of color, and then they stack them. The plastic trays are put into a kiln to dry. They bake for three to four days, leaving hard chunks of color. So a kiln is like a hot, um, like fiery place uh, that dries them out even more. They bake like you would bake a cake, but they bake the crayons for three to four days. The colored chunks are sent to blending machines where they are mixed according to special formulas to create different shades. So maybe they start with all red, but then they send that off and they can make purple, and a lot of different colors with red, orange, right? So they make the main pigment and then send it off and keep making various shades. Next, a machine called a pulverizer. There's some big words in here because it's real information. A machine called a pulverizer, which is like a metal grinder, grinds the blended colors into a fine powder. The powder is put into bags, weighed, and sent to the crayon manufacturing plant. So they mix chemicals, they have a liquid, it had water in it, they dried it out and baked it, and now look, it's almost like a fine powder. Just like you would have like chalk powder, like with colors, it's like that, it's all dry. Outside the plant are many storage tanks that hold heated liquid wax. Wow, so all of these tanks have different wax that's heated or like melted it again. Each tank is 26 feet high and holds 17,000 gallons of wax. Liquid paraffin wax is pumped through large pipes. So there's like the color of the crayon mixed with the wax, like wax you would have in like a candle. That's what crayons are actually made out of is this wax. 
um, which is why crayons can melt when they get in the sun. Into mixing that's inside the plant. Now, powdery colored pigments is poured into each vat of clear wax. So, the wax is pumped through the pipe. So here's where the wax is going into the big pipes. And then it comes out into a mixing vat, to V-A-T, vat. I don't really know what a vat is, but it shows us a picture here that it's going into the vat. Then they're adding in more powder color into the vat. It's a new vocabulary word about crayons. <gasps> Ooh, a rod, which is like a pole, a rod inside the mixing vat stirs the colored pigment and the clear wax, creating colored wax. So look at what color it is now. I think it started as red and then it looked like they had some yellow. Now it looks pink, but you're stirring it up. <gasps> oh, look how messy that looks. The frames move from the table and rods and push the crayons into an inspection bin. The crayons are checked for broken tips or chipped ends. Damaged ones are returned to the mixing vat to be melted and remolded again. So after they mold it in here, if they're not perfect, they can always melt the crayons again and try to get the crayons into the correct shape if they're broken. The crayons are then fed one by one by a conveyor belt onto a labeling machine. Each rotary table has dual labeling machines for the color being made. So they make all of the, the crayons in the mold. And then look at here, they're all going down the line to get labeled and like wrapped, like get their clothes on, get their little, their little sticker on them with their label. The labeling machine machines wrap and glue the label around each crayon. The labeled crayons are picked up by the operator running the machine and checked again for broken tips. So they really don't want the crayons to be broken when they're brand new. So they actually have a person inspect all of them and look for if crayons are broken and they can always go back, melt them again, and make new crayons out of the way. So look at all those crayons. Meanwhile, a small number of crayons from each batch have been taken to the quality control lab to be tested. A transverse breaking machine or a crayon eater checks the crayons for their strength. Electrically operated, the machine consists of a beam that acts like, like a fulcrum or a pulley. It puts different amounts of pressure on the crayons at different points. If the crayon breaks sooner than it is supposed to, the batch from which it came is remelted and molded again. So they actually have a person using this machine and it puts pressure on the crayon. Like pretend this is a crayon. It might like put pressure on the ends or in the middle. And if it breaks, they say, uh-uh. These crayons are not strong enough and they go back and they melt that whole batch and remake it again. I can't believe that. So they actually have somebody testing their strength. Crayons are also tested for their intensity of color. Is the red bright enough? Is it too pale or too dark? They are even tested for consistency. Does the wax lay down smoothly on the paper? Is it lumpy? Is there wax a waxy buildup, so they actually have a person who tests the crayons and makes sure that they're all good. Look at this, they're charting and measuring the intensity of colors and pigments. It's a science, it's not as easy as you think. They don't just make a crayon and like super easy, they actually have to test it and make sure that they're good. After the samples have passed the quality test, the undamaged labeled crayons are scooped up and packed into wooden crates. Crates of same color crayons are moved by a forklift to the packing area. So 
So now they're sorted by color. You can see they have all the orange, all the pink, all the blue. They keep all the crayons together. The crayons are put into packing machines that have different slots for different colors. So then this is the machine that would make the crayon box and make sure that you get one of every color. So one blue, one green, one yellow. This is to pack it in the crayon box. Just as a candy vending machine sorts the different coins you put in and drop your selection, the packing machine sorts and arranges the crayons into different colors and assortments. Narrow cardboard boxes called sleeves enter the machine flat. The machine opens them and puts in the color assorted crayons. So they're getting ready to go in the cardboard box. Look at that machine. Somebody invented that. Somebody invented this whole process to make crayons just for us. Another packing machine called a boxing machine puts an assortment of crayon filled sleeves into crayon boxes like the ones you see in the stores. Different machines can box anywhere from six to 64 crayons. Oh, I've seen those at the store. So sometimes you can get a pack with six crayons, but sometimes you can get a pack with 64 different shades. The finished boxes are then packed and shipped into the warehouse where they are loaded onto trucks and delivered to the stores. They are ready to be bought, taken home, and used. The rest is up to you. So that is how they make crayons. I hope that you learned some details or some facts about the process that um, people use to make crayons from where they start in the beginning to how they come to you at the store all boxed up. And um, we're gonna keep reading informational books since we're practicing main idea and details in humanities. So I hope you guys like this book about how crayons are made. All of this is real information. Have a good day.